Thank you. Uh, Madam President and trustees, we are preparing in five days, trustees, to welcome with our young fives, we will be welcoming the class of 2031. And so not a minute of our summer uh, passed without this team being fully focused as a team on what we need to do now to ensure, um, Trustee Kelly, that when that photo is made of those children on the other end, that we've done our part to make sure that they are well situated. So we'll work through just some of the highlights. Trustees, we don't want to wear you out at the first board meeting, but we do want to catch up just a little bit uh, because our team has been busy every week of the summer. I do emphasize with them to take vacation and they've tried here and there to get a few days, but but not a week has gone by that this team wasn't working and they certainly, <laughs> the Christmas is coming. Yes, they certainly lean on each other. One of the first areas, thanks to our 2015 bond and we are forever grateful to the affirmative vote of our community. This bond came at no additional levy to the taxpayer. Um, I'm delighted to share that 14,000 pieces of classroom furniture has uh, been traded in and out of schools uh, to allow for student choice and voice and movement in the learning environment. So kudos to Ms. Don Linden, Ms. Marilyn Colligan, and an amazing effort on the facilities team because it looks really beautiful here, but there's a lot that has to happen to get the older furniture out, of course. And then the other piece they did, Mr. Demetrio will be speaking shortly, the other piece they did, trustees, was they traded out the old broken down furniture across the district for the furniture that was coming out of these buildings. So we're able then to cycle out the worst of the furniture and the oldest of the furniture. So we're really excited, um, and I believe it was 12 buildings 312 classrooms that were transformed this summer. Now that's in addition to those that were completed prior. Um, our information technology, our IT team has just been crazy busy. Uh, they redesigned, uh, supported that redesign of the elementary report card. Not only was it a ton of work for our teacher team and Miss Linden, Miss Leanne Dickinson Kelly, but the IT team is the one that designs it and makes it all work in the system. So that work is not completed yet. They are still uh, tightening up the details. Um, over 500 teachers in our technology academy, teachers choose to do that. Uh, no one forces them to do that. So we're really excited for all of the energy uh, that occurred in August, during the first part of August. 30 teachers completed their leadership in blended and digital learning. Um, that cohort, uh, they installed two new wireless controllers, and that sounds light and easy, but these were some of kind of the heart of our network, and they were 20 years old, which is way beyond the life of such devices. So uh, Marilyn directed the work and we all held our breath and I don't think the system was ever interrupted when all of that happened, they did it just right. Um, and I feel better that our 20 year old parts that were really only supposed to last for 10 years um, have been replaced. We should be in better shape now. Uh, they set up laptops for 117 of our new teachers so far and then replaced trustees. You voted on it in the spring, but they actually replaced the, the 60 principal administrator laptops. So I've seen lots of happy principals leaving out of the building and they do that personally one-on-one -on -one with all of those folks. Um, our academic programs, um, we had over 800 students engaged. I just want you to look at the kinds of programs. The high school summer program, which is credit bearing. The Mitchell Scarlet Summer Academy, which is our partnership with the University of Michigan. Our ELL Summer School, our Elementary Summer Learning Institute. Um, Ms. Angela Newing was the principal uh, this summer of that institute. 
our preschool extended year, school year program, Dr. Brown's team um, works that piece, and then our focused math programs, and we've already been talking about our professional development. Over 800 students participated in summer classes. So I know trustees, Trustee Lightfoot in particular, these are things you really believe in, that our students are engaged year round, and we were happy to have lots of students in, provided we provided uh, breakfast and transportation we find that it's not enough just to convene a program. We have to get the children there. We have to make sure they're fed. Uh, we also provided a dedicated counselor to advise students on their credit acquisition so that we were on top of that. You can see some actual direct quotes from students in the programs there uh, on the slide as well. Um, A2 Virtual is an amazingly busy place. Um, 355 enrollments in A2 Virtual in Michigan online courses, and the majority of those in A2 Virtual, which is what we like, number one, because trustees, you well know the quality is better in A2 Virtual. We do have teachers engaging with our students. And number two, we like it better because we have to pay for Michigan Virtual. So uh, we really like it better when we can do that internally. 28 enrollments in community resource courses. Trustees, I did some investigation on this today, and I want you to know that 283 of those enrollments were first time taking the course. So students working ahead, are working to customize their schedule like Mr. DeAngelis speaks with us about to take that class so they have a little lighter load or so that they can take something else. So 80% of those enrollments were first time. So that really flies in the face of some rumors that you hear that, oh, virtual is only you know, for folks that have not passed the class. We really don't see that in our data in Ann Arbor. Um, 49 of those 355 enrollments were for students who wanted to repeat a course and gain the credit from a course they had previously failed. So 14% of that enrollment were students that were making up a credit. And we know how critical that is to our graduation rate and to ensuring every child is right on track for on-time graduation. 23 of those enrollments, you won't be surprised, trustees, 6% of that number were students who wanted to take the course again in order to have the opportunity to make a better grade in the course. So maybe I made a C the first time through, I'd like to get an A, I'm gonna take the class again. Um, so they had previously completed the course, but they wanted to try to up their number, up their success rate. Um, A2 Virtual is a player in the Ann Arbor uh, area, and we will be sharing more trustees about a large influx of students that we have coming from private school this fall who will be engaging with us full time on A2 Virtual, or many of them half time or most time. Um, and um, so we'll be sharing more about that as we, as we move along. That report, though, if you'll back up, Amy, puts A2 Virtual at um, 2,000 classes for the year. So right at 2,000 classes for the year. That's an amazing number, isn't it? Um, and we'll move on then to our English, uh, English language learning programs, really two areas that we worked in this summer. About 100 students participated in ELL summer school at Thurston, Slauson, and Forsyth. They got great help in upping those language skills. I love uh, thinking about these students as twice gifted. They have two languages and many, many folks don't in this country, um, but we want them to be sure to be proficient in English so that they can do well academically. So uh, we're really proud of the Mitchell Scarlet Summer ELL Academy. I'm so sorry that I had to miss their event 
But trustees, that's always a great event in July when they present their learning for the summer. This is a wonderful partnership with the University of Michigan, and we were proud this summer across Mitchell and Scarlet to have 108 students participating in that tremendous hands-on learning. They do authentic learning, um, and it's just wonderful to see. Um, you knew, trustees, from last spring that we were going to dive into some real math work, and these were two of our programs this summer, Delta Math and Dreambox Math. Uh, we did those as extra components across seven community centers where we provided the licenses so that students could use those enrichment and math support programs. Um, and just to show you how much they were used, um, 3,016 lessons were completed by our students and 599 hours of supplemental math instruction achieved right in our community centers. So we're really proud of that work. The second program you recall, trustees from the spring at Eastern Michigan and at the University of Michigan was a, an academic youth development program that combined those growth mindset acquisition pieces with the math piece. We'll be sharing with you more details about this as we uh, make some adjustments and plan for an even stronger summer next summer. Um, and they, the students that were involved achieved about a 20% improvement overall with their math skills. And you remember, this was designed to get them ready for algebra or to ensure that they're going to pass algebra and not to wait until they fail. Um, and the students actually attended classes at Eastern Michigan and University of Michigan, which we also believe is a great mindset piece. So more coming on that as we talk more about math. These are just kind of our highlights. Um, also wanted to mention our elementary summer learning institute. As I mentioned, Ms. Newing was the principal there. We had 20 teachers, seven para pros, and a little over 300 students who participated. You know a subset of that now for our second summer we're really proud of is the Fractions Academy. And we had 87 students that participated uh, along with math and Project Lead the Way teachers in that Fractions Academy. Um, also, uh, Dr. Brown oversees uh, the extension of the school year for our preschool students. 75 students participated in that program that is a part of being a special education eligible for such programming. 75 students is a robust number there from our preschool that were in extended year programming. Uh, professional development. Uh, apart from today, we had about 2,000 teachers in for and, and uh, para pros and TAs in for a full day today. But you can see apart from that, about 1,500 hours of professional development. I heard the other day, and we'll follow up to get the confirmation, but somewhere around 1,200 courses passed. Uh, by our teachers this summer, trustees. So when folks in the community say, what do those teachers do all summer anyway? Um, they are busy learning and busy taking uh, rigorous coursework. So we're proud of that. Um, as I shared earlier with principal hiring, uh, the heart of our summer is acquiring talent to our team. And I wish they were with us, Mr. Combs said this evening, but I would like to give a special shout out to the human resources team, uh, Ms. Shante Langford, Ms. Stephanie Fields, and their entire team. I don't recall an evening this summer that I have left the building, and there have been a lot of them, but every night I've left, Mr. Combs said their cars were still in the lot, and I heard they worked uh, around the clock over the weekend, and. They are working hard to get all uh, of our hires processed, and I just give them a big shout out. Now, along with those folks, this cabinet team also did a lot of interviewing, and our interviewing occurred with teachers and with community members and parents and students also on our interview teams, and we just thank everyone in the community that par participated on these teams. Um, I said the other day they have 
Uh, many folks on our team have a beautiful fluorescent pallor that they're wearing right now, and it's because they sent, spent their summer inside of a conference room conducting interviews. But out of all of that, uh, we gain the reward, and the reward of the hire of 120 teachers, 80 support staff, that includes our OPs, our TAs, just all of our support team that makes the school and the district run. Six we introduced tonight, but the total's eight. We'll fix that. Um, and then uh, coming uh, by the end of this week, they were interviewing even today, Ms. Parks and others uh, will be sharing seven assistant principals and deans. Um, that will come out trustees here in the next uh, day or so. I know HR is wrapping those up uh, even this evening. So I'm really proud, trustees, as I shared earlier, of the talent that we're adding to our team. We are, uh, we rise and fall on the talent that, that chooses to live and work with us every day. And we are privileged to have added lots of great folks and to have a tremendous team already. Um, while we're busy doing all of that work, one of our areas uh, serves children all summer, and that's Ms. Bacalor and our Rec and Ed group. And you'll be amazed, trustees, at some of these numbers, but they've been busy all summer uh, with camps every single week. They'll have students in camps all the way through Friday, and I love the smiley face because all of the Twitter feeds that I've followed this summer through Reconet and through all of the classes and activities, uh, everybody's smiling, Miss Bacalor, in every picture. So we thought that was an appropriate treat to use for your area. Um, 4,000 plus preschool through 12th grade registrations. That's a whole lot of folks to process through for a short summer session. Our Safety Town program, and trustees, sometime I want to show you the photos, not because I'm in them, because I'm just so proud to have gotten over there and gotten to be with the uh, Safety Town children, young fives, four-year-olds and young fives, five in kindergartners, 725 of them went through the full week of Safety Town. The day I was there, we worked diligently for many minutes to try to get arranged for a photo. And by the time we could snap the photo, they were in bright lime green shirts and like little lime green worms. I'm not calling them worms, but they were very squirmy. You'll see in the photo, they were just all over the place. <laughs> and uh, I have so much respect and admiration. Miss Linden, I know it's one of our elementary teachers who oversees that entire program. Remind me of her name. Jessica Cruz, she's an amazing uh, lady, an amazing uh, coordinator. She oversees the 725 of those little guys. And when they come out, let me tell you, they know their safety rules. So their parents always complain to me that they can never roll through a stop or go through a yellow ever again uh, because the children have been trained up. And I love seeing that they all know their address, they all know their phone number, and they know way more rules than I can remember, and I'm really proud of them for that. Uh, three, in addition to the Safety Town, 370 youth camp scholarships, that's over $70,000 in value. Ms. Bacalor and her team give scholarships year round and they will give somewhere around 200,000 or even more some years in scholarships through the year. Um, in addition to that area, they also have run uh, their summer classes, more than 1,000 participants in preschool and youth summer classes, and that's everything from belly dancing to cooking to just everything you can think of. Over 1,000 adult participants in enrichment, fitness, yoga, all of that. Um, 1,900 in pre-K through 12th team sports and 3,200 in adult team sports. So they've been very, very busy and I'm just so happy to see children out and running and playing and not just inside on a device. And Reconed serves that purpose. We're gonna turn it over now to Mr. Dimitriou 
who will be sharing with you uh, our facility summer updates. You know, trustees, how important the summer weeks are to us. It's a total of about 60 days, 65 days, and we use every one of those days to get in, as you can see here at Allen, and do the kind of work that we can never do when children are in the building. So we are digging holes and laying concrete, you name it. But this is a level of work that we can't just do on a Saturday afternoon during the school year. So we really do leverage the entire summer on our buildings. Mr. Dimitri is gonna take you on a tour. Trustees, we're delighted to schedule soon the dedication ceremony over at Allen now that it is complete. It will be complete tomorrow and then they will be cleaning over the weekend. So uh, you'll get to see it eyes on very soon, uh, but Mr. Demetrio will tour you through at this time. It is such a pleasure to be before you tonight. Mm -hmm. um, over at Allen School, we have uh, been working all summer, and uh, tomorrow is gonna be turned back to us. Today we had our final inspections, and we passed and we will be getting temporary occupancy. Um, and um, there were uh, new HVAC units that were installed, and you can see that's the base for a unit to go on. Um, there was uh, new lighting, new ceilings, uh, and you can see that. Uh, and the ceiling tiles, if you go in the classrooms, uh, they are blue and white, so it reflects the outside and, and new LED lighting. Uh, which will be great for energy savings. Uh, and it's, uh, it's amazing all the work that's taking place in the school. Uh, and uh, like Dr. Swift said, um, the, the hall, some of the hallways, most of the school has to be cleaned, but most of the, uh, some of the hallways, especially in the front of the school, we will be cleaning starting tomorrow and Friday and probably yeah. Saturday. So we wanna make sure that the school is ready uh, when the students return on Tuesday. Um, we also purchased 23 new buses. Uh, so our total now is 69 buses that are um, two years or less. Uh, a few years back, I think the average age of our fleet was approximately 13 years old. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in, in less than two years, we're less than half than that. In the next two years, we'll probably the average age will be uh, less than three years old. Um, so this is a new bus, and this, uh, this is a special education new bus, and you can see uh, where the lift is, that it will open and a wheelchair will come in. And this is the area where the wheelchair will be safely parked while the bus is, uh, is moving. So all the new buses have GPSs and cameras um, and uh, latest equipped and air conditioning. Um, and also, we have been very busy uh, installing uh, 16 modular classrooms, four in four schools, uh, Birds Park, Thurston, King, and Mitchell, and there you see the structure. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And all, all the modulars are here, um, and we'll be, we'll be working until uh, the very end. Um, so, also, furniture that uh, Dr. Sweet spoke earlier. Uh, there's uh, 12 schools that uh, tomorrow will be a last delivery. Uh, all the desks uh, and all the chairs are here, and tomorrow we'll be receiving the racks uh, that will be, uh, so we have three containers coming, I believe, tomorrow. That will be the last delivery. And then you see some, some of the new furniture uh, this is a King School, um, but there are, are 12 different schools. Uh, so there's been a lot of coordination and logistics in, in uh, getting the furniture from, uh, from ships to trains to uh, trucks to our school district. And also there's been uh, quite a bit of work, approximately 24 schools, and if, when you came in, uh, this school, you'll see the parking lot 
uh, that was uh, repaired and sealed and striped, and then also some of the pavement that was replaced. Mm -hmm. So we had 24 schools that received that, and this is at the pre-K uh, school, and, and if you go now, you'll, you'll see that that work was completed there as well. It was there yesterday. <coughs> uh, so also on Mitchell. And then you see some of the completed work um, in 24 schools. It is great to see how, um, how our, our facilities and our sites are improving. So you see that we invest our summer weeks to strengthen the district, to strengthen our personnel, our people, to strengthen our infrastructure, to strengthen our own learning and our professional development, and to ensure that we are prepared and better than ever to begin. Trustees, the last time we set the clock, the countdown clock, I believe it read 69 days, and that was back on um, in June when you were last together. And tonight, it sits on five days. And I want to remind our students and our parents and our community how much we've missed our children every single day they've been gone and how delighted we are that they will soon return to us. I don't know about you, but I can't go into a Target or anywhere without seeing our little guys out there getting ready to roll. So we know that our children are excited and trustees, we are excited. And we just thank you for the support that you have offered so that we can properly prepare for our students this year. It has been a busy summer and we are scurrying about with the last few details and trustees will keep you updated over the weekend with all of those details as they unfold. Uh, but we will be ready on Tuesday morning and we just invite any and all to go right on our website to call our back to school hotline number. We'll be on that hotline to answer any last minute questions that folks have about getting into school. Of course, the best way to do it is just to go right to your neighborhood school. But if something comes up and you're not sure, give us a call. We want folks to feel welcomed, to feel embraced, and to know that all are welcome in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. So we're inspired and we're dedicated to inspire. And I just thank every member of our teaching and administrative and support staff teams for all the work that they have done to be fully prepared for Tuesday morning. Thank you, trustees. It is a pleasure to serve in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, and we couldn't be more delighted to launch the 2017-18 school year. As we say right now, it's ready, set, go time. Thank you.